Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> what a journey. <laughs> what a journey. Isn't following the Lord an awesome journey? You can get crazy at some times, you know. <laughs> Thank God we don't have to figure it all out. Oh, God's got a plan. The thing is, we have a choice to be in it or not. You know, it's amazing to me that still we have, we've got to really remind each other, constantly remind each other that influence is from the unseen realm. So everybody got it? Turn to your neighbor, tell them you're being influenced by the unseen realm. And it's your responsibility to make it seen. Amen? You know, it's when we don't make it seen that we fall into bondage. We get deceived. And, and in that, we know when we're not right. We have a tendency to justify, compromise, ex you know, explain it, blame it, <laughs> and even lie to say it's God's will when it's not. <laughs> because we want to believe something so we say it. But it really isn't truth. And this is how it opens doors to the enemy. One of the things the Bible says is make no place to the devil. Make no place to the devil. Let me tell you, people wouldn't go through what they go through if they wouldn't make place to the devil. It doesn't mean that you won't be attacked. It doesn't mean that you won't go through trials because those are part of testing. That's a part of training. It's OJT. But there's a, an area, you know, God says he won't give you any more than you can handle, but I'll tell you the devil will. <laughs> so when you do it when you're in a place where you're, uh, you're things are more than you can handle you can be sure it isn't God it's the enemy you know, and he'll drive you nuts until you finally give up one of the things he wants you to do is commit suicide he wants you to kill yourself but he wants you to give up to the area of following God I can't do this any longer You know, he's not stupid. The word tells us he's the most cunning, crafty, and wise creature God created. He'll outwit us in a second. He knows exactly how to trip us up and how to manipulate us. He knows exactly how to stand at your door and knock and give you a desire and you'll say, oh, this must be God, when it isn't. See, God never interrupts himself. Never. He's the God of truth, not the God of feeling. Is everybody okay? And we've got to come to a place because the word tells us in the latter days, and I want to go there for a minute before we continue on, because we are in a series of the beginning of the end. Glory. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. I'll tell you, when the Holy Spirit begins to unveil, bring revelation and the areas of it, there's almost like layers, dimensional layers church is not the way it's supposed to be <laughs> or what it's been programmed to be We are in such a, 
a time right now where it is so twisting and turning and changing and shifting and people are not knowing what to do. And they're grabbing hold of anything to bring comfort. And what the enemy knows right now is he will, his job right now, and I'm going to tell you, is to bring you false comfort. He wants you to get comfort of your job. He wants you to get comfort of your spouse. He wants you to get comfort of your children. He wants you to get comfort, all of these false comforts that can only come from the comforter. And the comforter is called the Holy Spirit. Is everybody okay? These false comforts. Why? Because we have a tendency as humanites to always have to have some kind of comfort. People look for comfort in relationships. People look for comfort in all of these things. They chase comfort. And then when they finally get it, they realize after a period of time it isn't comfortable. <laughs> it's not bringing them what they thought it would bring them. You know, we have this area of comfort, even with a job. Well, yeah, man, I got a good job. It pays well, this, that, all of these wonderful benefits. Oh, hallelujah, you'll be in there for a little while. Yeah, yeah, and it's, yeah. Then you realize it's just another job, and it's not really bringing you that comfort like you thought it was going to. People get divorced. Because they lose comfort in one another, lose trust in one another. And they look, they jump from one relationship to another, and that's the carnal way. Looking for comfort. Always looking for something better. And never find it. Listen, we are in a daze right now that is so, so shaky. And the reason why it's shaky is because God is shaking everything everything. We are seeing storms. We're seeing all kinds of things happen. We're seeing sorrows. People losing their family and their children. People are wondering, where is God? What's going on in this? Well, he's in it. The word says, what you sow is what you reap. And if the enemy can get you to sow in the flesh, you will reap corruption. You know, sowing in the flesh means disobedience. We do that song. He sends his lifeline, but they're not listening. They're not hearing. We have a tendency to shut out what we don't want to hear if it doesn't agree with what we believe or what our comfort is. And the Lord says he chastens those he loves. And you're going to see a lot of chastening going on. And that is to correct us and get us in position. You will not find comfort going to college. You will not find comfort in your degrees. You will not find comfort in your abilities and talents. All of these things will eventually fade away. The only one you'll find comfort in is in the presence of the living God. That's it. No other comfort. Is everybody okay? In verse 1 in chapter 4, uh, 1 Timothy, I'm sorry. First, <laughs> all things are subject to change. <laughs> in verse 1, would you read it with me? Now the what? The Spirit what? The Spirit expressly, explicitly, what He's doing is yelling it. The Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, this word, the latter times, is a representation of days of Noah. Latter times is associated with days of Noah. Is everybody with me? In the latter times, some will depart from the faith. Did they depart from the faith in the days of Noah? Amen. 
giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Were there deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons in the days of Noah? You betcha. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. In other words, burning it out where there's no response. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from food which God created to receive with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So we see in these latter times, it's associated with the days of Noah where they're forbidding to marry. You know, they're forbidding to marry now. They don't, they don't care. They don't really want people to get married according to man and woman. But God didn't create Adam and Steve. He cre created Adam and Eve. Amen? Do you know that I, I was on my way out, I, was, I happened to just look at something and, and it came up on the news and it said, first atheist monument being established. Now, come on. They're going to erect the first atheist monument when they won't even allow us to put a cross up in the government places or anywhere, you know. The first atheist monument. You don't, you don't think judgment's coming to this country or it's here already? You don't think that there's a shaking? Something's going on. Something's infiltrated all the areas of government and everything else. Something's pulling away God's people. Something's drawing them away into compromise and complacency, into false desires and lusts, false comforts and lies, and bringing them into bondage, chasing false hopes and not chasing the Lord. You know, while we were worshiping today, the Holy Spirit said to me, you know, Many worship me, but don't worship me. He says, you know, many draw, but without a true heart. They come to me with their agenda, not willing to receive mine. You know, one day the Lord said to me, many pray, but disobey. <laughs> See, people put their how much they worship and how much they pray. Let me tell you what it is. It's how much you obey. But without God's presence, you're not going to obey. Amen? Without making contact, you're not going to obey. So it may be just a ritual. I come to worship, I come to pray. But you really, your heart is far away. This is where the Lord said to Daniel, when he sent his angel, the day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself is when I came. I heard your prayer. Again, when I was in Haiti and I saw these people worshiping like crazy and I, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and I fell to my knees and I looked and I wept and I saw hundreds and hundreds of people worshiping the Lord. I didn't understand the language, but I understood the Spirit. And I said, why? Why is this not in America? And he said, because I'm all they have. In America, there's too much deception. There's too many things that people want. I'm really not first. I may be second in some lives, but I'm barely first in the lives of America. And the Spirit says expressly that many will fall from the faith, from following. It doesn't mean that they won't say that Jesus is their Lord and Savior, but they will say that, but not mean it. And they will go another way. So we see that this influence of the unseen realm is influencing many, many souls today, isn't it? Amen? Again in Matthew 24. Oh, hallelujah. Matthew 
In verse 37, just a quick recap. Matthew 24 and verse 37, it says, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and what? Drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. These are the latter days, the latter times, the last days. And we're seeing this. We're seeing many things that are being exposed. We're seeing wickedness being exposed. We're seeing again when we talked about the Girl Scouts. I mean, here we are, the sweet Girl Scouts that most of them don't even know. And it's not about them. It's about their organizations and the heads of these organizations that have turned from following God and now turning to darkness or have gone to secularism, that they support Planned Parenthood, which is the number one abortion in the country. The Boy Scouts have now approved gay so they'll take gay men in there. Pedophiles are going to allow in the Boy Scouts now. They didn't allow that when I was in Boy Scouts. All kinds of things that are being exposed and, 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 and being revealed in these last days. And, and we're seeing it. We're seeing these things happen before our eyes because of the influence of the demonic activity is being increased. It's being increased in a mighty way. You know, evilness on the earth will draw demonic activity from hell. More and more demons come. Would you turn to the book of uh, Jude? Now, we had talked about that in the days of Noah, that there were giants on the earth and so forth, and then how... These angels put on flesh, went into women, and produced offsprings. That's in Genesis 6. And became Nephilim. And when these Nephilim died, when God killed them all, their spirits became demons. They are disembodied spirits looking for a body. And the Bible tells us that those who follow me, Jesus said, that there will be signs. They will have signs. And these signs will be the first thing. It says cast out demons. These are Nephilim spirits. <clears throat> and in that there we are being influenced. We saw what happened with Cain and Abel. When they both brought an offering. Amen. And the correct offering was blood. Because blood is always applied. And we'll talk about more of this later, especially when Jesus came and brought his blood. The blood that's above all blood. And where Cain brought the offering of the garden, and Abel brought the offering of an animal, a sacrifice. And the Lord told Cain, because his continence was down, he said, look, at if you do the right thing, everything's going to be okay. In other words, he was telling them, bring the right offering. You must apply the blood to your life or your flesh will rule your life. Well, he chose not to. And again, again, Cain ended up killing Abel, which was the first murder, the first killing. Because it was the influence. And what did the Lord tell Cain? He said, that sin's desire is knocking at your door. Sin's desire. See, sin cannot have a desire unless it's a representation of a presence. So what he was saying is there is an evil presence at your door and it's releasing, it's promoting a desire in you. Does everybody got it? It's carrying a desire. So these ungodly desires are promoted by demonic forces. Fear, anxiety, stress, worry, lust, perversion. All of these ungodly things, anything that is against what God says is ungodly. It's real simple. If you must discern that, well, would God say this? If God didn't say that, it, then it's not of God. So everybody got it. It's real simple. That's how we discern these things. 
You know, just because the world says it doesn't mean God said it. Hallelujah. Where did I say to go, Jude? Good. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Jude. This is so powerful. I'll tell you, this whole scripture came alive to me. I haven't seen things uh, that, that just things are just opening up that are just phenomenal. And when we go over this book of Jude right now, you're going to see a whole different arena. And I'm going to explain it as best I can through the Spirit. Is everybody there? In, in verse 3, let's start it together. It said, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to content earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Uh, 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 in other words, there was a salvation granted to the believers. Now look at verse 4. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago... Now, uh, this is powerful. These certain men that have crept in, they carry the Nephilim seed. They are offsprings. Now, not all the Nephilims were giants. They look like normal people. But they carried the seed. He said, for certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago, long ago though. So these certain men were unbelievers. Amen. Carrying Nephilim giants who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Long ago, meaning the line of the seed of the serpent. The Nephilim. Is everybody with me? were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who would turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> In other words, we see that this is that seed has been continuing down. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people of the land of Egypt afterward, destroyed those who did not believe. See, he, he's telling us about these men that are coming in present, and he's going to back it up and begin to tell you about where they came from. These individuals that are present, that have crept in and caused people to move away from following the Lord. He said, in verse 6, look at this. And the what? The angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. So he's speaking about the Nephilim and the fallen angels. He's saying, and their offsprings that have come down, all of these, all of this line have entered in even now and today. Remember when they died, what did they leave? Demons. Demons don't die, do they? But when they, when a person dies, that demon just goes to another body, doesn't he? In verse 7, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in the similar manner to these, having given themselves over the sexual immorality and after strange flesh, this strange flesh is known as animals. Hello? We're going to talk more about this later, about hybrids. And are set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal life. In other words, they were having sex with everything. This was the days of Noah. Like also wise, these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, even the devil came to get bo Moses' body. And Michael, the archangel, stood before the Satan and said, No way. Dared not bring a, against him a revile and accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil what they do not know, and whatever they know naturally. Like brute beasts in these things, they corrupt themselves. 
Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of what? Cain. What was Cain's influence by? Demonic forces. Have run greedily in the air of Balaam for the prophet, for prophet, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. Korah was one who came against Moses. He rebelled against Moses. These are spots in your love feast while they feast with you without fear. They feast with you without fear. Why? Because they are demonic influenced individuals and seeds of Nephilim. Serving only themselves. There are clouds without water carried about by the winds. Late autumn trees without fruit. Twice dead. Twice dead. Why are they twice dead? Because they were killed but came back, didn't they? They were killed when the Lord flooded the whole earth. He killed all mankind, which wasn't really mankind. They were the off they were the offsprings of the Nephilim because they had already killed all the correct DNA of the human race. The only DNA left of the human race was Noah. And these demonic forces in Nephilim, ruled by Satan, when these Nephilim died, when the Lord killed them all on the earth, their spirits did not die and they roamed the earth. So everybody got it. That's called twice dead. Is everybody okay? Like autumn trees without fruit. No fruit. Why can they not pr produce fruit? Because they are not created by God. Twice dead, pulled up by roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars. These are that word star means angels. They were associated with wandering angels. For whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever? Now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust. They mouth with great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time. What's the last time? Days of Noah. Who would walk according to their own lusts. These are sensual. Sensual means soulish and worldly individuals. Who caused divisions not having the what? Oh, hallelujah. Can a demon have the spirit of the Lord? No. Can the seed of the serpent have the spirit of the Lord? No. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and on some have compassion. Look at this. Making a what? Distinction. Okay, making a distinction, making a distinction where they are individuals that redemption is granted or individuals that are not. Redemption is not granted to the seed of Satan, his offsprings. Only redemption is granted to the seed of Abraham, the seed of Adam. Does everybody got it? Remember, there were two areas when Eve fell to the serpent. And we're going to talk about how Satan became a serpent, but not today. How Eve fell to the serpent by in part in, in taking the seed, okay? What that seed did is it removed him from the spirit realm into the realm of the flesh realm. It removed the covenant, and then the Lord restored the covenant by restoring the blood. Is everybody with me? When Adam and Eve 
left the garden. <clears throat> he caught an he just he killed an animal and put them and wrapped them in blood. So this is where self came in from that seed. Self came in from that seed. Flesh came from that seed. So there was a human DNA, but it was a fallen nature. But it was not the seed that would be produced by the angels coming down. Get loose. That's what they call dragonflies. He'll attack in any way he can. Comes as a little fly. <laughs> So in this, we see that the, we, the flesh came forth. Amen? And then while the flesh came forth, then the angels put on flesh and went into the women of the flesh and produced hybrids, offspring, Satan's seed. So this may be difficult for you to understand, but some of them are still here today. And that's why he says that we must discern which ones have redemption and which ones do not. They do not have redemption. There's no redemption for them. In fact, I want to read something to you because I was in the book of Enoch. Enoch, in the book of Enoch, is very powerful because one of the things that happened with Enoch, he was writing that during the time of Moses, I mean, during the time of Noah, that these demons were killing off his grandchildren and so forth. And that even the angels that fell, they were called watchers now. The Nephilim were called watchers. They went to him and asked him to intercede and ask God to rescue them. And he couldn't because he could not rescue something that was not associated with blood. See, because an angel doesn't carry blood. Even when he puts on flesh, he doesn't carry blood. He was carrying the seed of the serpent. Carrying the seed of Satan. And when he went into the women, because your DNA is associated with the Father, the blood is associated with the Father. Has everybody got it? That's where you inherit. You inherit from the Father. And, and, and is everybody Okay. And, and, and in this, we see then that the Lord can't redeem something that's not of Adam. Only Adam's line can be redeemed. Not Satan's line can be redeemed. Is everybody okay? Are you getting any of this? Okay, I'm gonna, I got this, um, I've got a couple areas of uh, assortment of books, but I have the book of Enoch, and it talks about during the time um, of Noah that the angels, the, the Nephilim came and the fallen angels came to Noah. And it says, Then I went and spoke to them all together and they were all afraid and feared and trembling seized them. And they besought me to draw up a petition for them that they might find forgiveness and, and read their petition in the presence of the Lord of heaven. For from thence for after they could not speak with him. After they what? After they put on flesh and left their abode. Nor lift up their eyes to heaven for shame of their sins for which they have conde been condemned. Enoch takes this peti peti petition. So Enoch takes this petition to God. And then informs the watchers of their, um, uh, and their hybrid children situation regarding whether they can be redeemed. So Enoch, so these watchers, the hybrids and the fallen angels, they came and they asked Enoch to write a petition for them before the Lord because Enoch walked with God. Enoch was taken alive. And he said, I wrote out your petition in my vision. It appeared thus that your petition will not be granted unto you throughout all the days of eternity. And that the judgment has been finally passed upon you. And your petition will not be granted to you. And from henceforth you shall not ascend into heaven until all eternity. 
unto all eternity. And in the bonds of the earth, the decree has gone forth to bind you for all the days of the world. And that previously you shall have seen the destruction of your beloved sons, and ye sh shall have no pleasure in them, that they shall fall before you by the sword, and your petition on their behalf shall not be granted to you, nor on your own, even though you weep and pray and speak all the words contained in the writing which I have written. So Enoch was telling them, you have no redemption. So everybody got it. There was no redemption. And um, again, based on the book of Enoch, which reflects even in the places of what we just read in Jude and there's Second Peter, redemption was not possible for any of the fallen watchers or their hybrid offsprings, though the Nephilim were part human. In this sense, Nephilim could, could be compared to uh, uh, extraordinary primate. In, in, they were intelligent like men and angels, even possess human DNA, but not homo sapiens as fashioned by God in his image. Anything that is not fashioned by God cannot be redeemed. Is everybody okay? Um, hallelujah. And, and it goes on and so forth. But, I, you know, these are the areas. And in, 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 in this, there was a period of time when Noah, who complained before the Lord. Let's see if I can find this. Noah complained before the Lord. And I think it was in the book of Jubilee. Uh, look, and he says, uh, uh, of course, and it comes to the past in a part of the days of the Lord or great tribulation when Satan and his angels punish the unbelieving world before they are resigned to the pit. So we know that God is going to use Satan and his angels during the tribulation period to punish the world. Um, they will continue their brutal and unbattered and unpunished uh, from the death of the giants until the day of judgment. So we know during tribulation God will use them to punish those who are out of order. Um, and one of the things I want to at least go down today in the area of how the, the, some of the, the descendants of Noah, the three sons of Noah, how, how did these hybrid, how did these Nephilim come into the New Testament or into the, um, after the flood? Would you turn to, uh, Genesis chapter 7 with me? Sons of Noah is today's title. In the book of Genesis in chapter 7. Now I want you to know that between Adam and um, Noah was ten generations and which was around 1,100 years. So there was plenty of times to produce offspring. Amen? 1,100 years was plenty of time, <laughs> I would say. You know, Got to remember, these guys, what, Adam lived to 950, 930 years old or something. Noah lived to 950 years old. In fact, Noah didn't have kids until it was around 500. <laughs> so you know you think about whoa must have been really good oxygen then and good herbs let me tell you <laughs> Genesis chapter 7 and verse 1 it says and the Lord said to Noah come into the ark you and all of your household because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation so we see that Noah was the only one righteous he was still maintaining the seed of Adam and in verse 11. So we see in the 600 year of Noah's life, so he was 600 years old. In the second month, the seventh day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the deep, great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened and the rain was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And on the very same day, Noah and Noah's sons, here's Noah's sons, Shem Ham and Japheth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Noah's wives, uh, Noah's wife and the three wives of the sons with him entered the ark. So Noah had a wife 
and all three of his sons had wives. They and every beast after its kind and all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind and every bird after its kind and every bird of uh, every sort. They went into the ark to Noah, two by two, and all flesh, which is, which is the breath of life. So those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in, and God commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Now the flood was on the earth forty days, and the waters increased and lifted the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth, and all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed fifteen cubits upward, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every man. He killed everything. Why? Because these hybrids, again, were having sex with everything. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every man. And, and, uh, and those nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life. All that was on the dry land died. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping things and a bird of the air. And they were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained. And the waters prevailed in the earth. 150 days. So Noah was in the ark 150 days. It says, And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters begin to subside. So we see here that in this time then the waters began to subside. We see that Noah was 600 years old when he was in the ark. Uh, he didn't have children so he was 500 years old. And all flesh was destroyed in 150 days. The whole earth. And let's go to Genesis 8 and verse 15. Is everybody okay? Are you following along? In 15, let's read it together. Then God spoke to Moses saying, Go out of the ark. You and your wife and your sons and your daughter and your son's wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, the birds and the cattle and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. And Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his son's wives with him. Every animal, every creeping thing, every bird and whatever creeps on the earth according to their families went out of the ark. Now look at this. This is powerful. He said, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth nor will I again destroy every living thing that I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest time, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. So immediately Noah got out of the air and he, off, he set up an altar and offered up what? Blood. Blood. Remember, why did Cain commit murder? Because he didn't offer up blood. Amen? Because the Lord showed Adam right from the garden how to overcome your flesh. Has everybody got it? By what? Applying the blood. Amen. So in this, it was the first thing that Adam did. Even Job did that. That's why Job had a hedge of protection. Always was sacrificing and applying the blood. Amen? Okay, Genesis 9 verse 1. It says, so God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and the fear of you and, and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth and on every bird of the air and all that move on the earth and all the flesh of the sea. They are given into your hand. Now listen, that hasn't changed, you know. That's not changed. 
As a man thinks, so he is. Things have been polluted coming down. We've inherited so much pollution that even when we come to Christ, we still carry that pollution until things are removed from us. And we really know who we are. See, the enemy's still trying to prove you who you are according to his image. And God is trying to show you who you are according to his image. Verse 3, and every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I've given you all the things, even as the green herbs, but you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. Surely for your life blood, I will demand a reckoning. From the hand of every beast, I will require it. And from the hand of man, from the hand of every man's brother, I will require the life of a man. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made man. And as for you, be fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply. Isn't it amazing? Because what he was saying, don't eat blood. Don't eat blood. In other words, that's why when you kill an animal, you drain the blood, don't you? I can tell you that you don't have to be so concerned when you go to the store and buy steaks. That really isn't blood anyways. It's a red dye preservative that looks like blood, but it's really not blood. So when they, when they drain the animal, they put a red dye preservative in the blood and replace. I know all about that stuff. <coughs> so that's why we're to cook our food, aren't we? But it's amazing in how many individuals, if you look at the satanic arena, what do they do? They offer up blood and drink blood. Look at all the stuff that's being put on TV, drinking blood. I mean, they're walking around with blood coming out of their mouth. and you know, Like it's okay. Everything is promoted of evil right now. They're promoting individuals to defile themselves by drinking blood. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go a little further. The Moses, then the God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, As for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you, with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds of the cattle and the beasts and the earth with you, and all that it goes out of the ark, every beast of the earth. Thus I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. So we know that the earth will not be destroyed by a flood. Even though we see many floods today. And he's talking about the whole earth. Actually, the whole earth will be destroyed by fire. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living thing that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and you. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant between, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all the flesh. So we see that the rainbow is a covenant now, saying I'm not going to destroy all flesh by flooding the earth. It's, a main, uh, it's amazing how certain groups have taken the rainbow. The gay agenda is logoed the rainbow. Oh, how sweet. Think about it. Hallelujah. In verse 16, the rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will look on it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant which I established between me and all flesh is on the earth. So we have three sons that came out of Noah. We've got Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And I'm not going to go into all the genealogy today. But we are. Because you're going to see the difference of what happened and how the earth was populated. But there's one I want to at least start a little bit with. First, I'm just going to give you a quick scenario. Um, Shem was the promised seed of God. His family line. That's where the Hebrews came and so forth. 
They were the promised seed. It was called the seed of the woman. Ham was the seed of the serpent. His family line. Generational family line. Japheth was the seed of the Gentiles, which were, they were also known as open-minded and intellect. That's where the Gentiles came from, the carnal, the flesh. Again, between Adam and Noah was 1,100 years, so there was a lot of population there, and that's when God killed, so he was starting all over again. And, and in this time now, between um, uh, Noah and his sons, which they were, they, they, they left the ark and three of them have been married. So we know that each wife of the sons of Noah, the one ham that would be the Nephilim or the seed of the serpent, he married one. He married a Nephilim seed. He married an offspring. Does everybody got this? Ham married one. And now you got to understand that during that period of time, um, you know, the word says that a man shall marry a woman, they become what? One flesh. Well, he married one. In fact, out of the three sons, Ham was the one that rejected God's will and turned away from God from the beginning. The other two sons served the Lord. Ham refused to. So he married a, a Nephilim woman. And, and at that time, you got to understand that they would worship other gods. So if Ham married a Nephilim woman, you know what he was doing? Worshiping their gods. So everybody got it. So he wasn't worshiping the God of righteousness. He began to worship the God of demons. We'll go, we'll, we'll go a little further. And this is explained in the next verse. In verse 18, let's look at this. It says, Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham was the father of Canaan. Now listen, he mentions Ham as the father of Canaan. You remember the Canaanites? Okay. That's down the road. In fact, Canaan was supposed to be the promised land, wasn't it? It says, these three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated from the three sons of Noah. In fact, the three sons of Noah that uh, produced offsprings and grandchildren and so forth established the 70 nations in the country, I mean, in the world. It says, now look at it, in verse 20. Now Noah began to be a farmer. He wasn't a farmer before. <laughs> he began to be a farmer. And he planted a vineyard. Now in a vineyard, you grow grapes, don't you? Noah had no idea what fermentation was. He didn't know about things that would be fermented and get you stupid. It says in verse 21, it says, Then he drank of the wine and was drunk. Why? Because he didn't know what fermentation was. He had a farm, he had grapes, he had stuff, he was eating things and that, and then he made juice and... <clears throat> he was seeing stars. And it says, And he became, he was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. Now, Ham, his son, the father of Canaan, he's going to constantly re remind us of the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Now, people go, oh, you mean he just saw? Why would God be so angry? He did more than see. I know this is kind of hard to comprehend sometimes. But Ham did a homosexual act on his own father. Remember, who was he associated with now? Nephilim. 
Were they not perverse? And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. So they went in backwards. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done. Nobody told him. He knew. Look at when you're drunk, you may not move too quick. You may be stupid. You might not remember everything, but there are certain things you can remember. And he was angry. He was furious. Again, so Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done. Didn't say what his younger son had seen. Is everybody okay? You got to remember the perverseness of these spirits now. They were now using ham. Then Noah said, curse be Canaan. He didn't curse ham. He cursed his first offspring. A servant of servants he shall be to his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant, and may God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. So all the days of Noah were 950 years and he died. The man was 950 years old. Now again, I, I, I know sometimes these things are a little bit strange and hard to comprehend, but you've got to be in that, in that time of the wickedness and the evil that was passed down and Haman became one flesh and began to worship these demons and these false gods. You know, it says, make no place to the devil. These demons began to use him. Did you notice that the Lord did not curse him because he was already cursed by God? He cursed Canaan, his first offspring. He didn't say a word about Ham again because he wasn't considered anymore associated as being his son. But he spoke of Shem. I mean, he spoke of... Uh, yeah, Shem and Japheth. Is everybody okay? Good. Let's go to Genesis 10. Now, this is the genealogy of the sons of Ham, uh, the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and the sons who were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madiah, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Taras. The sons of Gomer were Ash, and so forth. In verse 4. And the sons of Japheth. So it goes all the way down. Now, uh, it first speaks of Japheth. And I'm not going to go down all the lineage. But there's something here that's important. It says in verse 5, From these the coastland people of the what? Gentiles were separated into their lands, everyone according to his language and according to their families and into their nations. According to their language. Well, we'll see, you got to remember that this is kind of like a, a, a pre-summary of what is about to happen. Then he's going to go to where the tower was built with Nimrod and so forth. And it says the sons of Ham were Cush, Mazarim, Put, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush were Seba, uh, Havala, Sabbath, Ramah, Sabatak. The sons of Rama were Sheba and Danan. And Cush begot what? Nimrod. Cush begot Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty man, mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Now, you would think that this was, well, if he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, this is cool. <clears throat> but 
But the translation of the original Subtuagent, the translation that the Subtuagent says, now I want you to grab hold of this, because remember, Ham married an offspring, a hybrid, which produced offsprings, didn't they? This is how the giants came after the flood. It says in the Septuagint original scripture, it says, and Nimrod became a giant. He became a what? A giant. Nimrod became a giant. And he was a mighty hunter. It talks about how Nimrod built Babylon. And he built many cities and, and all the offsprings all the way to Canaan and the Hittites and all the other ones. All, of the, all of down the, Jena, uh, all down the, uh, the line there. And it says, in the beginning of his kingdom in verse 10 was Babel, Erech, Akkad, Kelani. In the land of Shinar, which is Iraq area. And from that the land he went to Assyria and built Nineveh, Rehab, and Kelana, and, and Resan between Nineveh and Kela, and so forth. And again, these were also all the families of the Hittites and so forth. So I would just wanted you to see the area of how they came in after the flood. And Nimrod was a giant. Now, Again, I want to share just a recap before we go a little further. Noah was chosen to carry on and restart humanity after the flood because he was a believer in God. Additionally, he was the what they call the perfect generation because he was human. He was not a hybrid, which meant that his genetic bloodline and ancestry was 100% human. Noah had not been a part of the Nephilim hybridization that was plaguing humanity. While Noah and his sons were 100% human, we are not told the same about all of his wives. So we can look and see what, they ha what happened. Obviously, one of them married a hybrid. Amen? <laughs> and uh, Canaan carried the Nephilim gene. This could only happen through his mother's his mother, Ham's wife, having the Nephilim gene herself, since we know that Noah and all of his generations were 100% human. If Ham were wicked and not a follower of God, the odds of him taking a wife who was part of a Nephilim hybrid pagan culture would not be so high. But because he was wicked, he picked up, he took a wife. And they worshipped false gods for the example of Solomon or King Ahab and and, and marrying and worshipped all kinds of false gods. Men who fell into sin after uh, ending up marrying wives who were they weren't supposed to marry. And from what the Bible tells, details, Ham was no follower of God. In fact, he was involved in the inappropriate incident with Noah that led to a curse. And uh, and he and again, you know, we know that Noah planted the vineyard and so forth. So we see that this curse went down. Now Shem and Japheth were righteous children of Noah and, uh, and they show, uh, show respect to the father. They covered themselves and they covered him. Ham, again, was wicked and, and, and there's no record of him ever repenting at all. Uh, the lineage of the post-flood giants can be traced specifically, again, to the three sons. And the Bible is full of lineages in the, in the Bible, you know, and, the, and again, the first grand, grandson of Ham who received a special uh, designation, his first grandson was Nimrod. And Cush began Nimrod. And again, in, in, the, in the Septuagint, it says that, uh, and he became, began to be a giant upon the earth. He was a great hunter for the Lord and a giant. And the name of Canaan should be the most familiar with us because it was known as the promised land. In fact, the Lord reserved the Israelites after they escaped out of Egypt, thanks to God's miracles and leadership of Moses. The fact that they were uh, in the promised land the Israelites were supposed to inhabit was no coincidence. The Philistines were also worshippers of demons, and you'll find that the, even the Philistines are the, in the lineage of Ham. 
okay, and the fallen angels and Satan. And the Nephilim giants among them were working to attack God's chosen people. Canaan's line contains many of the enemies of God. Is everybody okay? And, uh, yeah, hallelujah. I want to go uh, to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. I just want to share a couple places in the scriptures where we can see that God was sending out his armies to destroy these places. So, so many times people didn't realize how could God be so, you know, go out and kill all the mothers, fathers, the children, the cattle, everything. Because they were hybrids. They were producing offsprings of the Nephilim. And um, Deuteronomy 7 Is everybody there? And verse 1. It says, When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess and have cast out many nations before you, the what? Hittites, Gershites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Pezzarites, and the Hivites, and the Jezebites, and Parasites, and every other site, and seven nations greater than, mightier than you. He says, greater and mightier new, bigger. And if you know all of these lineage are from Ham. <clears throat> when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Nor shall you make what? Marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. For they will turn your sons away from following me and serve other gods. So the anger of the Lord will be aroused against you and destroy you suddenly. So that's what happened with Ham. He turned away from the Lord. Amen? Go to Numbers 13. Now, hallelujah. Verse 17. 13, 17. It says, And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell and is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or there are not. Be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes, so they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin, as far as Rahab, near the entrance of Hamath. And they went out, through the south and came to Hebron, Anamon, Shaniah, Talmah, and the descendants of Enoch were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Then they came to the valley of Eshkol and there cut down a branch with a cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut there. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation and all the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh. 
And they brought back the word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are what? Strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Enek. Enek were giants. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jezebites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. And they, have, and they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is the land that devours its inhabitants. In other words, they eat the people. Has everybody got it? They will eat the people. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of the great stature who are called giants. Has everybody got it? There we saw, verse 33, say it with me. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like what? Grasshoppers. In our own sight, and so we were in their sight. In other words, the giants were there. But the Lord told him to go and destroy all of them. If God be with you, who can be against you? Amen? Is everybody okay? And, and um, Let's go to Joshua. Chapter 12. Again, I'm not going to get in great depth of all of this. I just want to share with you and show you some places where the Lord was telling me to go out and destroy these places because of the Nephilim. Hallelujah. Starting at verse 1. These are the kings of the land whom the children of Israel defeated and whose land they possessed on the other side of the Jordan toward the rising of the sun from the river of Aran and the Mount Hurom and all the eastern Jordan plan, plain. The king of Shion, the king of the Amorites that dwelt in the Hezbon and ruled half of Gilead from Ara, which is on the bank of the river Aran from the middle of that river even as far as the river of Jabbok, which is in the border of the Ammonites. And the eastern Jordan plain from the Sea of Shabanoth as far as the Sea of Araboth, the Salt Sea and the Road of Beth, Jeshemoth, and the southward below the slopes of Pegas, Pegsga. The other king was Og, king of Bashan. And his territory who was the remnant of the what? Giants who dwelt at Ashtaroth and, and at Adrai. And reign over Mount Hermon, over Salca, over Alabashan, and as far as the border of the Jesuits and the Mekshinites and half of the Gilead and the border of Sharon, the king of Hashbon. These Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the children of Israel had conquered. And Moses and the servant of the Lord had given it as a possession to Rebon, the Reubenites and the Gadites. Gideites and half of the tribe of Manasseh. So we see that the giants were there also. Go to 2 Kings chapter 21. I mean 2 Samuel chapter 21. You know, so when we hear all these things, why the Lord sent King, why he sent, uh, King Saul out, when he told him to kill all the, uh, the, the kings and everything, and then Saul came back with the king and the Lord was angry with him? 
Because he was trying to stop that lineage. He's still trying to stop that lineage. In 2 Samuel 21, and uh, we'll just go to verse 14. It says that they buried the bones of Saul and Jonathan, his son, in the country of Benjamin and Zalah, in the tomb of Kish, his father. So they performed all that the king commanded. And after that, God heeded the prayer for the land. When the Philistines were at war again with Israel, David and his servants with him went down and fought against the Philistines, and David drew faint. Then Ishbanob, who was one of the sons of the what? Giant. The weight of whose bronze spear was 300 shekels, who was bearing a new sword, thought he could kill David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruah, came to his aid and struck the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore to him, saying, You shall go out no more with us to battle, lest you quench the lamp of Israel. Now it happened afterwards that there was again a battle with the Philistines of God. Of God. Now again, the Philistines are so, that's where Goliath came from and so forth. Amen? Let's go to First Chronicles 20. So you see, much of the Old Testament was also associated with trying to get rid of them. Is everybody okay? Anybody okay? <laughs> you know, it, it's a little trying in this because it's like, whoa, what is this? You know, our carnal mind tries to say, man, this just can't be. It can't be. It can't be this way. It just doesn't seem real. See, but we, we really have to come out of the arena of living in the natural and begin to see through the natural. And begin to realize that your influence and my influence is by demonic influence. We're either being influenced by the spirit of the Lord or the spirit of de demons. And demons are the spirits of the Nephilim, which still roam the earth. And they're looking for a body. They're a disembodied spirit. And they don't care who you are. And they don't care whether you're a Christian or not. They'll access you whether, if you'll let them or not. We cast out demons out of many Christians. First Chronicles chapter 20. In verse 3. Would you read it with me? And so he brought out the people who were in it and put them to work with saws and with iron picks and with axes. So David did all the cities to the, all the cities of the people of Ammon. Then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. And now it happened afterward that war broke out at Gezer with the Philistines. And, and at which time, so ben, whatever his name is, Sabashi the Hushabite killed Sapai, who was one of the sons of the what? Giants. And they were subdued. So again, we see that the fight was continuously until the giants were killed off. Amen? Is everybody all right? And in this again, their spirits still roam the earth. They are looking for a, dis, a, 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 a host. Now, I'm going to go a little bit further here. It says in verse 6, Yet again there was war in Gath, where there was a man of great stature, look at this, with 24 what? Fingers and toes, six on each hand and six on each foot. And he also was born to the what? Giant. So when he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shemaiah, David's brother, killed him. There was born to the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. So remember, David's call was to kill these giants as he killed Goliath. Amen? And, and things are still happening right now. Again, the influence of the demonic realm. 
cannot be ignored. They influence you with desire. Their influence is to prevent you from doing the will of God. Has so everybody got it? We'll go a little bit further on this later and we'll continue. But right now we're the beginning and the end. The beginning and the end is associated with the days of Noah. And because we are in the days of Noah right now, you are going to see more wickedness, more lying, more all kinds of evilness begin to manifest more and more and more right to your face. Amen? But it's our responsibility to keep so, ourselves clean. The, Lord, the word says, cleanse yourself from the latter. Cleanse yourself from inherited curses. Cleanse yourself from your family line. Cleanse yourself. Cleanse yourself from the ways of the world. Come out from among them and be separate. The Lord says, then I'll be a father to you and you'll be my sons and daughters. Amen? It's time to learn so you don't get burned. Amen? Truth. This is truth. This is not fairy tale. This is not fiction. This is reality. And one of the things that we must come to a place of the reality of who we are. Who we are. Not who we were, but who we are now in Christ. There's a difference between B.C. and A.D. I'm no longer B.C. I'm A.D. And that's not a label of A.D.D. <laughs> I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things pass away and all things become new. Amen? Thank you. Father, we give you all the glory and honor and praise. We thank you for your word today. We are honored and blessed. And we ask that the seed that be implanted will grow and bear fruit for your glory. And that the reality of who we are in you will come before us on a daily basis. Lord, I want to thank all those who have Listen today and heard today your message. All, the, all those who are watching, we encourage you to continue to grow in the Spirit. Go to eternallibrary.org. There's over 900 messages that can guide you and teach you. May the Lord bless you and keep you and fulfill His will in you that you may be a sign and wonder to the world. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank all the listeners and the viewers. And for more teachings and resources, please visit us at the eternallibrary.org. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and heal you and uplift you because you're a new creation in Christ. And old things have passed away and all things are made new in Christ Jesus.